powering our world, the grid's big job, electricity. It's the fantastic energy that runs our modern world, from your bright lights to your cool computer games, even your refrigerator. We use it all the time. How does it get to us? It doesn't just appear. It travels through a huge system, a network called the power grid. Think of it like roads for energy. These roads carry electricity from power plants far away right to our homes and schools. It's a big connected web. Now these energy pathways, they come in two main types. First there are overhead lines, you've seen them I bet, wires strung high on poles reaching for the sky. Then there are underground lines, hidden beneath our feet. So, overhead or underground, which one is better? Let's investigate together, science rules. Overhead power lines, you see them everywhere, right? Stretching across fields, lining our city streets. They are tall poles made of wood or metal or concrete, holding up strong wires. These wires are the conductors. They carry the electricity. It's a common sight. How do these sky wires work? It's pretty neat science. Electricity flows like water in a pipe but through these special wires. The wires are usually bare metal like aluminum or copper. They hang from insulators, those glass or ceramic discs. Insulators stop electricity from escaping to the pole. Safety first. One big reason we see so many. Overhead lines are often cheaper. Cheaper to install that is. Putting up poles and stringing wires is usually less expensive than digging big trenches. So, for wide open spaces, or when budgets are tight, overhead lines are a popular choice. And when something goes wrong, like a tree branch falls on a line, technicians can often spot the problem and make repairs faster. But these wires in the sky, they have their downsides too. Think about wild weather, big storms with strong winds, heavy ice in the winter, branches from trees falling down. All these can damage overhead lines. Snap, goes the wire, or a pole might even fall. When lines get damaged, the power can go out. Zap, no lights, no TV, no internet. This is a reliability issue. Overhead lines are more vulnerable to mother nature's moods. So, in stormy areas, power outages can be common leaving people in the dark, safety is a big concern. If a power line falls to the ground, it can still be live with electricity. That's extremely dangerous. Never ever go near a downed line. Also cars can crash into poles, leading to more outages, and serious accidents too. Section 4 Underground Power The Hidden Network Now let's go underground. Imagine power lines buried deep, safely tucked beneath the soil, or running through special pipes. These are underground power lines, you don't see them, but they're there, doing their job, delivering electricity silently. It's like a secret network. Power flowing under your feet. How do these hidden cables work? Well, they are super protected. The electrical wires are inside thick layers of insulation and a tough outer jacket. This keeps the electricity contained and protects the cable from moisture and damage. These cables are then buried in trenches or conduits. A huge advantage of underground lines? Reliability. Yes, because they are buried, they are much less affected by weather. Strong winds? No problem. Heavy ice? Doesn't reach them. Falling trees? They're safe below. This means fewer power outages, especially during bad storms, and no poles for cars to hit. Section 5 Digging Deeper, The Hurdles of Buried Cables So if underground lines are so great, why isn't everything buried? Well there's a big hurdle and it's usually spelled C-O-S-T, Installing underground power lines is much more expensive than putting up overhead lines. Think about all that digging, excavating long trenches, it takes time and heavy machinery. The installation process itself is more complex and slower. You need specialized equipment to lay the cables carefully and to connect everything properly. Working underground is just tougher than working up in the air. So, the initial investment? It can be many times higher for underground systems, folks. What happens if something goes wrong with a buried cable, that is, finding the exact spot of a fault? It can be tricky, you can't just look up and see it. Special equipment is needed to locate the underground problem, and then repairs mean digging again. This can take longer and be more disruptive too. Section 6. Nature Health and Power Lines What's the deal? Let's talk about nature. Overhead lines can affect it. Trees near power lines? They often need to be trimmed. A lot, to prevent contact. This changes the look of trees, and sometimes birds can fly into wires, which is sad for our feathered friends. So, there are some impacts on the local ecosystem. Underground lines have impacts too, though often different ones. The process of digging trenches can disturb the soil and habitats at least for a little while during the installation phase. Once buried, the land can recover. 
There's also a tiny bit of heat released from underground cables, but usually, it's not a big deal for soil. Now let's talk about EMFs, electric and magnetic fields. Sounds sciency, right? It is. All power lines overhead or underground and even appliances in your home create these invisible fields. Section 7. The Smart Choice Balancing Power, Planet, and Price. So, overhead or underground? Which system wins the prize? The truth is there's no single answer. It's not that simple, folks. It really depends on many things. Communities need to weigh the pros and cons like we've been discussing. It's a big cost-benefit analysis, thinking about money, reliability, and safety, and the environment too. Where the power lines are going, that's a huge factor. Is it a crowded city or a wide-open rural area? What's the geography like? Hilly, flat, and the climate? Lots of storms? Population density matters too. More people often means a stronger case for underground to improve reliability and looks. Different places do different things. Around the world, you see variety. Many big cities are choosing to bury their power lines, especially in new developments or when upgrading old systems. But in rural areas, overhead lines are often still the norm because of the vast distances and lower population density. Technology is helping too. The future of power lines, it's looking pretty bright. New technologies are emerging. Better ways to install cables like trenchless digging, cool, stronger, more resilient materials and smart grid technology that helps manage power better. The goal is a balanced approach, considering local needs and what's important for everyone.